Hey everybody, today Rado's gonna run through his top 10 most anticipated games for Essen 2016. We're here folks, we're finally here. There were so many games to go through, but these are the tops, the must-haves, the ones I will not leave Germany without in my hot little hands. Fingers crossed, I mean, hopefully. But you know what? Before we get to that, I'm not going to Germany alone. Actually, let's bring in a special guest appearance by my lovely wife, Jen. Hi, Hi. honey pie. Hello, everybody. Hi. Hi. Uh, like I said, Jen's going to be at the show as well, and you will actually have a booth set up, right? I will have a table at the stand with NSKN Games. Mm -hmm. They have been very, very generous, giving me space. Yep, yep, yep. Lovely people. Lovely uh, people. Where are they? They are in Hall 1. G124. G124, yep. Hall 1. So if you want to meet Jen, you're going to be there all four days. In the flesh. Right? Uh, yes, except the for the occasional bathroom break, I suppose. <laughs> and uh, selling your, your gamer glass, selling jewelry, yep. and also taking entries for your yearly Essen themed giveaway. Yes. All righty. Yes. And this year it is a lovely game called In the Name of Odin. Yep. And I've made some markers to go specifically with the game. They are runes. And they actually spell out the name Odin, and uh, they, there's a special one that also means Odin. The red one, actually, that rune means Odin. Yep. So these are your Odin runes, basically. Yep. Obviously, you can use them for keeping score in the name of Odin, or, well, really, any game. <laughs> um, and so, basically, if people seek you out at the show, yep. you'll have a sign-up form, and at the end of the show, one lucky winner will get a full copy of the name of Odin yep. and a custom handmade set of scoring markers in right. Gamer Glass. Yep, just like those. Right. Yep. And in addition, I'm going to do a, another drawing for my online people who have signed up right. on the website. Okay. So just go to jennifer.net and uh, give me your email address, and on probably Wednesday or Thursday after the show, we'll do another drawing. Yeah. J-E-N-E-F-E-R dot N-E-T. Yes. Sign up for her newsletter, basically, and you could potentially win this as well. Yeah. Thanks very much to NSKN for hosting Jen and yes. for also providing the games, although you'll still be providing the glass. Yep. And was there anything else about Essen you wanted to say? It's a nice partnership. Um, just one last little thing is that I was going to be offering t-shirts, Gamer Glass t-shirts, and also Rotter runs through Spiel 2016, <laughs> that would be 2016, uh -huh. uh, t-shirts as well, but I need to know by the end of the day on Wednesday, which is two days from now, if you want those. So go to my website if you do and order them, right. and I'll have them for you at the show. By the 5th, by uh, the by the end of the day, Malta time, October 5th, October 5th. Uh, they have to have gone to your Etsy site to order if they want to pick those up at the show. Yes. And Because this is a limited time thing. After the show, you're these these t-shirts, after that, they're coming off. Yep. Um, okay. It's so, thing. hold on though. Totally forgot, Jen also wanted to mention that for the first 100 people who visit her every day at the show, she will have for them a little Rotto Runs Through sticker that you can stick on your phone, on your peachy, on your forehead, whatever it is you might want to stick a little icon of me on. Jen's got you covered. So be sure to swing by. First 100 folks every day gets one right. I think that's it. That's Thanks, it. honey pie. Thank you. Apologies to anybody. I think this is the first ever um, uh, commercial interruption of a Rotto runs through. But now, folks, now let's get to those final, those all important top 10 games. Right. So, number 10, where is my list? I have it right over here. Okay. Number 10 is The Colonists. And this one, I, I actually. Of all my top 10, this is, I think, the biggest punt, the biggest gamble, the biggest risk. It's from Lookout Mayfair. Uh, it's from a brand new designer. This is his first published design. What is his name? Um, Tim Oles. I've got written down there. And it's interesting. It's a, it's a worker placement game where you just have one worker and you don't actually place him on the board. He actually moves around from, say, space. All the worker placement spaces of the board are the board itself. The, it's a modular board. It snaps together. So all the different worker placement spaces create this area that your one worker, you, kind of your mayor, can navigate around moving from one space to the other. So it's not like a regular worker placement game where, oh, I can just choose any of these actions I want if they're not blocked. You have to plan out ahead. Right. In this turn, if I do this, that means next turn I could do this, this, or this. That's actually a really cool idea. And you've seen similar things to it, like maybe in an Istanbul or something like that. But I think this sounds actually very, very fresh. And the other thing about the game, too, is this is a, their big, heavy economic euro. They've always got one every year. 
This one also features a series of campaign scenarios, so you can kind of get, this is a rarity for um, Euro-style games, a sense of progression, this storyline that goes one after another after another. Bye, honey pie. Um, yep. Alrighty, uh, so that actually sounds really, really cool to me. My number 10, Colonists. And then we move on to the number 9, Golden Sails. This is from designer Yuri uh, Zurevlev who kind of burst onto the scene a few years ago with Viceroy, an absolutely phenomenal game, one of the best games of that year. And, you know, it's since gone on to get published in America, and a lot of people love it. It's a really, really great game. This is kind of his follow-up to that. It's set in his same fantasy universe. I think the name of the universe is Tempest or something like that. But anyway, so it's a, it's a fantasy setting. But at its heart, it's a very simple card drafting game, where all the cards we're going for have multiple uses. You know, it could... You know, it could produce several different things. But for me to actually take the card, I just don't reach out onto the table and grab it. I have my own cards that represent experts in gems and travel or whatever. Whatever the different categories that all these cards provide, I have to admit, I don't know all the particulars, but I'm, I'm in love with this idea. I've got these experts. If I want to grab that particular card, because it's got a green gem and I want a green gem, well, i got to play my gem expert to grab that card. That means I've just given up my gr gem expert. I can't grab any of those other gems anymore. For any of those other cards that are still out there, I have to use a different expert and grab them to have a different function. That is so cool. Such a fresh, interesting take on card drafting where, I mean, not only do you have to pick the cards you want, but the actual um, uh, ca characteristic of the given card. And once you've taken that characteristic, you can't take any other cards for that same characteristic until all your experts are done. Then you call them all back. It sounds absolutely brilliant. And Viceroy was Phenomenal. And so I have very, very, very high hopes for the Golden Sails. That's my number nine. Now, on to number eight. Four Gods. I have been waiting for this one for years, it seems like. It seems like it was first announced a couple of years ago, and I've had it on my geek list of interests for quite a while now, and I'll tell you why. This is a real-time tile-laying game, a competitive one, uh, where we are each gods, all you know, up to four players, up to four gods, each you know, competing to build the world as fast as they can. You know, by laying tiles out and you know, having to make sure all the tiles line up appropriately, kind of Carcassonne style. So you might say, well, that kind of sounds like maybe a galaxy trucker. Everybody's racing to build their own truck. Oh, we're just all racing to build the same, our, our, our world and have the best world, right? Uh-uh. So here's the thing. We're all racing in real time, tile laying, to build the same world. We're all putting tiles into the same common world. So, as, you know, as I've got this tile in my hand, and it's got ocean on one side and, and continent on the other, and I'm trying to find the perfect place to put it. If I'm paying attention to you, oh, look there. Over on the western side of the, of the map, you put down a space that makes gives me an opportunity to put my tile down. And you have to be careful about that. You have to be constantly thinking and paying attention, not only because you're not, unlike Galaxy Trucker, not in your own little world, just focusing on your own little thing. You are focusing on a communal world that we, as four gods, all control and all build simultaneously. Mind blown. I am so excited about this, and I have been forever. It's from uh, uh, Chris Bollier, or B Bollier uh, who did Archipelago, who's done Dungeon Twister. He is a really outside the box designer, and I mean, I've been waiting for this for a long time. I cannot wait. Oh, I'm almost there. Number eight is Four Gods. Should have actually done that so it would have been my number four. That would have been smart, but I've never been accused of being smart. Let's move on to number seven Gluck Alf. Das Grosche Kartenspiel, or Cole Baron, the big card game. Um, I've already done a run-through for Cole Baron, or Gluck Alf. I mean, you can go uh, ch check that out. It's a wonderful worker placing game. Jen and I enjoyed it quite a bit. And it's from my favorite um, board game design duo, Kramer and Kiesling. They are now gotten together. They're revisiting the ideas. And uh, according to the description on Board Game Geek, this promises to have the spirit of Gluck Alf, or Cole Baron, but uh, what's it say? Uh, very distinct, new gameplay, and yet just as intense. That sounds good to me. But you know, whenever you say Kramer and Kiesling get together, I'm going to be there with bells on. And so I'm really excited about this because I think this is the first time where they've ever decided to revisit a design and come up with new interesting ideas. So what does that mean? Over the years, they, they well, we're not done with Gluck Alpha. We've got to go back. We've got to revisit it. Let's not do an expansion. Let's do a whole new thing that gets us explore this space in new ways. Why isn't everybody as excited as me for our number seven, Gluck Alf, Das Grotenkartenspiel? Number six is going to be 
Order of the Gilded Compass. And I'm super stoked for this because I have been the biggest fan of Aaliyah E. Octa S forever. A wonderful, wonderful dice worker placement game long before they were cool and hip um, from Bern Eisenstein and Jeffrey Allers. Done a run through for it. I've been raving about it for years, but it's been out of print for years. It's been very, very difficult to find. And uh, finally, it's been reprinted. It's been completely rethemed. It's no longer set in ancient Greece. I guess it's set in kind of a uh, Indiana Jones world hopping artifact collecting kind of scenario. Honestly, I don't really care. All I care about is that great, wonderful gameplay with new ideas. Once again, this is an example of designers revisiting their baby, coming up with new and interesting ways. Because, you know, in the years since, they've designed other games, they've gotten better, so this could only be an improvement, right? We'll find out as soon as I get my hands on number six, Order of the Gilded Compass. Number five is Railroad Revolution. I've talked about them before, I'm going to talk about them again. The Zanguo Design Super, super Team of uh, Marco uh, Canetta and uh, Stefania Nicolini. Um, not as well known, perhaps, as your Stefan Felds or your Uwe Rosenbergs or your Eric Langs or whatnot, but these two are just crackerjack designers. Uh, the Doe Ship was a phenomenal game. Zanguo was absolutely amazing, as I've already talked about. Um, and now they are getting together, teaming up once more with What's Your Game to bring out R uh, Railroad Revolution. Um, so, what's it about? Well, I, I guess it's a worker placement game. And the most interesting thing about it is that you, you have generic workers, uh, you know, just who will do with the action of whatever you place as you're trying to build your rail network across the continental U.S., I guess, from the uh, screenshot of the board we've seen so far. But you can take the option to promote your workers and give them specialist roles. Now, I've seen that in a bunch of games, um, so that's not exactly new. But uh, knowing Marco and Stefania, or uh, Stefania, I expect really great things because, you know, what's your game? They're, they're one of the best board game publishers out there. They're easily one of my favorites. They'd be in my, my top five board game publishers of all time. They've got good instincts. Uh, Stefania and Marco have got good design shops. Zanguo was phenomenal. That's why I'm super duper stoked for number five, Railroad Revolution. And then moving on to number four, The Great Western Trail from Alexander Pfister. I mean, this guy, this Alexander Pfister guy, I don't know how many tours I'm going to talk about, just how he's amazing. Uh, just over the last few years, he's had some Spiel des Jahres, Kenner Spiel des Jahres wins. He's um, you know working with a lot of other designers, putting some lot of great stuff. This is a big magnum opus for him, uh, working all by himself this time. And it's uh, basically a big heavy, sprawling Euro, economic simulation Euro, set in the American West. That in and of itself is intriguing and exciting to me. Normally, American West games are like, you know, big old shoot 'em up in your face stuff, or, um, you know, kind of light party fair. It's rare to find something that's really meaty, like, uh, like uh, say, Carson City. So, uh, Great Western Trail, you are cowboys trying to run your, uh, you know, your cattle into, uh, you know, your cattle herd to, ma to make it through. Uh, you know, and uh, you're as focusing as much on your herd as you are on your team of cowboys who have to be taken care of you know, when we're out on the trail trying to, uh, to make it. That's all I know. That's all I need to know. I'm super duper stoked. I mean, Alexander Pfister has just rocketed um, to the top of my must-watch every one of his games, even the ones I didn't like because maybe they were a little too mean, like Broom Server or something. I've been impressed by just how smart and clever they are. That's what I expect from number four, The Great Western Trail. And then moving on to number three, Le Grand Ha, the dice game. No siesta. Now, I did a run through for Le Grand Hall when it first came out a couple of years ago, and I said this is one of the best games of the year. I think it was maybe my number two game of that year. I'd have to go back and check. Um, number two or number three. So amazing. Um, from from uh, these guys who just kind of came out of nowhere um, and you know made this amazing hodgepodge Euro design that feels like the best of, of what Stefan Feld could offer. And I say that as high praise because Stefan Feld is, as always, my absolute favorite board game designer of all time. The Grand Hall was absolutely amazing. It did so many things well. And one of the things that it did right in the middle of the game, in the middle of every round, you had this very palpable, tension-filled 
uh, dice draft. It worked really, really nicely. And so what have they done? They've taken that dice draft out of the full game with a million different things and built a whole game around that that still captures all the thematic beats of the full game and just becomes a smaller, quicker, easier, more digestible package. I love it. I love dice drafting. I recently declared that my number one favorite gameplay mechanism of all time. These guys have made one of the best dice drafters ever um, thus far. And now, but there it was just one small piece of a, of a big mosaic of gameplay. Here, it's the sole focus. So I'm even more excited. Cannot wait to try the Grand Ha, uh, the dice game No Siesta. And then we move on to number two, Key to the City, London. From um, Richard Brees and Sebastian Bleasdale, uh, those guys, when they got together before, they gave us uh, Key Flower, which is still in my top 10 favorite games of all time. Phenomenal game. Every expansion that's come out for that has just improved the game. It's just gotten better and better and better. An amazing auction game. Works well with two. Does so much right stuff. And so now, uh, this... Uh, what, what's, actually... Quite a few uh, design pairs here. I just I didn't even realize that till now. So these uh, designers have gotten together again. They're revisiting the ideas of Key Flower, but transposing them out of you know a, a presumed new American world and basically uh, putting them in London as players watch London build up before them. I don't know what's new or different. Obviously, the, the art's different. The setting is different. I don't know if the gameplay is exactly the same or if they've come up with new stuff. I don't care. This is a buy sight unseen. Uh, I mean, these, you know, uh, you know Richard, you know, the, the, both these guys have really proven themselves. Keyflower, one of the best games of all time, as far as I'm personally concerned, in my own opinion. So, of course, it's a no-brainer. Must get Key to the City London. And finally, folks, the number one, and, you know, it really should come as no surprise, particularly, actually, I was just saying a little bit ago, number one, the Oracle of Delphi from designer Stefan Feld, my favorite designer of all time. Yay! Stefan Feld is back with a big game. You know, he, uh, a few years ago, he had this big run of a ton of really awesome, amazing games. Then he kind of went quiet for a while. Uh, a little while ago, the, earlier this year, he gave us Castles of Burgundy, the card game, which was phenomenal. Absolutely love it. But I'm looking forward to something new and different from him because that's what I probably admire most about Stefan Feld more than anything else. He's always coming up with something new. He's always reinventing wheels. Um, um, you know, bravely adopting new gameplay mechanisms. And my understanding is the same is true here. This is not a Steffenfeld point salad like a lot of people might assume it's going to be. Apparently, this is a race game um, where you are zipping as fast as you can to, uh, you know, call upon the favor of the ancient Greek gods and, you know, sail all around the Aegean. So it sounds like it's a bit more Ameritrashy. I'm sure it's not. I'm, you know, but it, it's, it's certainly. It certainly sounds like his most thematic game to date, and I, I don't know that for a fact. Again, like uh, some of the previous ones, I haven't even bothered looking at the rules. I don't want to look at the rules. I don't want to have it spoiled for me. I am just super duper excited to finally get this in my hands, start playing it with Jen, and I fully expect to fall in love with Feld all over again. High praise, um, big pressure, but you know I've been wanting a bigger, um, meteor new Feld game for a while. And you know, I've been getting them from other designers, other developers. I've talked about them, but there ain't no Feld but Feld, and he's back, baby, with my number one, Oracle of Delphi. And that's it, folks. The top ten, the creme de la creme, the ones I know, but there were so many more. Um, and I'm just going to say, uh, keep an eye out for more. There's plenty more to come. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Now, I should add, um, there is plenty more. As I just said, there's a lot more games at the show. And if you'd like to hear some more, because I just talked about 10, I talk about another 35 or so. No, and actually more than that. 35, 45, 55. I talk about another 60 or so games, expansions, promos, a whole ton of stuff that's going to be at Essen Spiel this year in episode 17 of Rotto Talks Through, my regular podcast. So if you want to hear some more, if this was not enough, just go to podcast.rotto.com, click the link, uh, download the MP3, listen to it however you want. There's lots of ways you can do it. Uh, you can do it on a, you know, you don't have to have a smartphone, you can do it on a PC, just download the MP3 directly or stream it directly off um, off the website. And uh, like I said, I, I it's very long. 
It's very tiring, at least to me, but I try to be as thorough as I can combing through Eric Martin's Geek List with a fine tooth comb to find all the goodies that are out there. So if you want some more, I hope you enjoy that. Otherwise, thanks for watching, everybody. Talk to you later. So long. Bye-bye.